Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah so, so this. So, so basically, uh, so, so great, great tip. I so to print, print this in the first place, I disassembled it with object dump. Then in VS Code, I copied it. I copied part of it into a file. I installed an extension that had assembly syntax highlighting. I switched to light mode briefly. And, and then, then I copy pasted that, that into a Google Doc, which I formatted and then printed. So the great thing about printing it out, I found is that like it's just really easy to annotate. So, so, uh, so firstly, I, I had, so yeah, so firstly I labeled all the jumps, as you can see here. So we have this. So when you label the jumps, that's how you can see the roughly like where you're gonna like the phases basically. I mean, sorry, the loops in, in in within the phase, and then going through that, some key things to notice are like, for example, we have this add, like add one over here, and that's usually a sign that you have like an incrementer variable, so R thirteen in this first big loop. And if you go back up here, you can see it was initialized to zero initially, and also, of course, uh. It's a good idea to see what your stack is looking like. So minus 58, that's 80 in decimal. So that looks like this, where every row is eight bytes. So for example, a long would fit in one whole row and an int would fit in half a row. So when you look through it, you can see, for example, oh, I'm moving this address into this pointer. And then I'm doing a, and then I'm gonna do a loop where I increment it and I read from it here. Like I read from it, this is like the, index accessing thing, and it's a loop of six. So I know I'm gonna be storing those six. Oh, actually, sorry. The six numbers are stored, if you separately read that function, uh, you pass it this as the pointer variable. So you know you're gonna have six variables over here. And that's just a great, that's just a guide to see like what your program is storing in memory at the time. And yeah, working through it, labeling all the jumps. There is an interesting thing in my one where like it just randomly, where is it? Oh uh, yeah, here. It just randomly jumps to the end of the function and then jumps back one instruction later. And yeah, here's the second page. This is the interesting bit I found where basically when you actually get here, you just skip over it. And the only purpose these two lines have is to uh, is to perform an instruction when they're jumped over from the beginning of the function. There's something interesting because the rest of the code is actually quite like, not obfuscated really. So yeah, print it out and just work out, work it out on paper, identify the key variables. But also besides these two, I want to share a different me method, like the method I actually first went to when solving it that sort of streamlines the, streamlines, streamlines the process significantly. So one second. Uh, let me log into the guacamole instance. Here we go. So here I am. So in the instance, and there's this great uh, re rever static analysis reverse engineering tool called Ghidra. So if you search a search of Ghidra, it's actually by the NSA, which is quite interesting. And if you download it, which I are which I've already done, but yeah, you just download it from here. It's pre-built, no installer, whatever. And then you can run it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. The NSA releases this open source alternative to those like paying those big subscription fees, but now I have this for free. Very helpful. And of course, tip of the day menu. Uh, so basically you can import a file 
And if you just import your bomb into it, uh, it does a bunch of analysis automatically. And that's not the end of it. So at this point, it's just like figured, it just gone through the assembly. But when you actually open it up with the code an analyzer tool or something, you can analyze it. And the great part about this is with, with even like just like the defaults and everything. Uh, let's see. And it's already done. So you can go to here. It provides a symbol tree, which is a list of all the symbols that you can see scattered throughout like for debugging. And actually it tries to reverse the program as best as it can. So in fact, you'll notice that this matches the source code you provided very closely. Except now you can see a bit. Except now you can see a bit more in that it also, of course, reverses. For example, phase one, plain as daylight, I suppose, which is which is very useful. Though I will say, it does detract from some of the assembly experience, <laughs> which is why I want to go through it on paper too. But more importantly, phase six. Here you can see it will still be a mess, of course, but. That's, but the key thing is it helps you figure out all the control flow because it just has it straight up. And the best part is that you can gradually, as you're reading it, you can gradually start renaming things. Like I know that this is actually the array of numbers. So I can just if I hit, I think it's F2, no. Rename variable, I can just name it to like V for vector. And now the code is cleaner. And if I repeat this process gradually, which I have done in the past, but I have not here, uh, the more interesting thing is the one reference to a global. So at first you have this mess over here, but if you hop on over here, uh, after a bit of reading, you'll notice that these cells, there's this repeating pattern. Each of these labels corresponds with, let's see, not very familiar with the interface, but still quite intuitive. And basically first you have just uh, some number in the first eight, bytes, I'm sorry, first four bytes, followed by another number in the next four bytes. And in particular, it's a bit cramped here. In particular, these numbers, I believe, point to a different node in the list. Yeah. And so, okay, Oops, let me see been a bit, in a small amount of time since I did this last time. Let me make this part of it, pain a bit larger. And one of the powerful things about it, let's see, let me open this. Yeah. That is not what I wanted to do. Thankfully you can undo always. Uh, and let me find that again. Apparently you can't undo that. Actually, no, it did show it yet. So first you have, uh, yeah, here. So first you have an address to somewhere else. So that's the 02000341. And then you have some random value in the next eight bytes. So uh, if you convert this to, if you translate between hexadecimal and binary, this should in fact yield another one of these 60 addresses, I think. Uh, so once you've figured that out, uh, a powerful tool is you can actually define a data type, just like kind of like corresponding to a C struct, because now you know it is a struct. So actually, if you do new structure, you can actually build it yourself. So if I just name it, it's a node. If I name it like node, then I can add, for example, a I think it's a long, yeah, eight long, and then another long. Oops, got to click in that cell, or else you activate a bunch of shortcuts on accident, and that's what it matches roughly. I can save it. That's great, and actually, I can do slightly better because I know that the first one is actually a pointer to a node. So I had to save it the first time so that I actually knew what a node was, but now it's a pointer to a node followed by a long. That's out of the way. Wait, let me just close it. 
So node one, I can right click. Actually, I think I have to. Hope it's not off screen. Where is it? Data, yes. Data, choose data type. I claim it as a node. Uh, yes. Whoops, it was not this chaotic the first time I did it. Yes, so, hmm, okay. looks like it got, oh, right, I did get it the wrong way around. It's actually this 63340 that points to a different node, and the first one is the random value. And in fact, that seems to be two ints, not actually, I'm not sure. For now, I guess it's a long followed by a node star. So the fix is actually, so the fix is simple. Just find the data type you've defined. Here we go. Edit. And just swap them around. Save, close. And now it does in fact point to a different address. So 066, 06 which is which is indeed this cell. So at that point, I can just select all of these at the same time, change all of them to nodes. And <laughs> expected that to be slightly more enthusiastic. But if we go back here now, you can see actually this became a lot more clear. And in fact, if I name these fields properly, so this one is just some value. And this one is uh, next because it points to another node. So it's probably a linked list. Now you can see that the last part of the function is just taking the nodes that you've stored in some list. So this is, I guess, let me rename this to like nodes. It just re it just rechains a linked list basically. And in fact, if we go down here, as you can see, this seems to be an extreme mess. Actually, yeah, which suggests that I in fact interpreted it incorrectly. It seems to say it's an int star, so I will change that too. This will be an int. This will be another int. Save it, close it. And now this is so much prettier. And of course, up here, you can do a similar thing. Uh, but at this point, it starts to get readable enough that we can go through what's doing. So firstly, read six numbers into, I thought they renamed that, fortunate. That's a better name. So at first it reads a bunch of numbers. This is our pointer, this is our uh, index. So we can see we increment it and then we break out when we hit five. So we check that the number, this is very similar to I think what we went over last lecture. There's this un, there's this unsigned. So we're, this actually casts the unsigned. That's a property of C that's inherited here. So it needs to be between uh, one and six, I think, yeah. It needs to be one between one and six inclusive. Then we just increment it. And then there's, here's the more interesting part. We have an inner loop. This is something that is much less obvious when you look at the assembly because of the way that like the, the initializer for the loop could be like somewhere totally random. And if I just name that to J, now I can see all it's doing is checking that no two numbers are equal. That's it. And then down here, we have this. So we have another thing. This is indexing into it. So I'll just call it it for iterator. Uh, it just takes every number in the list and it will do seven minus that number. So one becomes six, six, two becomes five, so on. Then we have this. This is the most interesting part. Uh, we have another pointer. Let's see, what could this be? Oh yeah. So this thing seems to be following the nodes around, so I'll call it node. 
And then this seems to be counting like how many times because it increments, but it's not used as the terminator. So it's just kind of counting how many times this runs. So I'll call it count. So all we, so we see now that, actually no, it is another increment, but basically all we see is that it simply runs this line nums j times. So whatever our jth number is, we will repeatedly traverse the linked list that many times. And then, uh, let's see. After that, we store the result in that corresponding element of the nodes list now. And then last thing is we relink the, those nodes in the order that we stored them in the list. And for the final thing, that's so clean now that I don't even need to rename any variables. All I do is check that uh, the value of a node is not less than the value of the node after it. So, yeah. So, and then I move to the next node and then compare with the node after that and I repeat for all of nodes. So effectively, all we need to do is find these nodes and sort them in greatest to least order by their value cell. So to do that, we need to go back, of course, to the actual data. And here we see the... And let me just minimize this. Never mind, I can't read what it says. So for example, the first one has a value field of O2, A7, and so on. And it's linked, that's also important. It's linked to this node, which is in turn linked to this node. And in fact, very convenient for at least my bomb, they are just originally linked in this order. So if, for example, I want to select node five to be first, I would just put the number five in and it should work. Actually, I need to put the number two in because it does seven minus X before it actually uses the numbers. And then of course that's, then it's just a matter of sorting them. And yeah, that's how I solved this case. Oh,